What the Fed has been doing is very similar in the sense that the, the Fed, okay, as we've talked about over the last decade, the Fed's been engaged in these really radical policies of driving growth through money printing, wild stuff. That graph you showed at the beginning, I could we could walk through like 10 graphs of that where history goes like this and then just explodes, you know? We're in a different territory. The program at the heart of that is called quantitative easing, which the Fed really undertook in 2010. But when the Fed undertook it, it pressured other central banks to follow suit. That's one key reason why you see it in Europe, why you see it in the in the Central Bank of England um, or, or, or yeah, uh, the, the, the Euro. Yeah, uh, the European Central exactly. Bank. Yeah. Okay. So let's go back to the beginning of the book. The you know the Lords of Easy Money or whatever starts on November third, two thousand ten. Yes, and a key thing here is the financial crisis of two thousand eight, two thousand nine was a near you know it was a cataclysm. It could have created a depression. Uh, I just want to emphasize the point that the Federal Reserve was largely responsible for that crisis because it had kept money so cheap for so long that it stoked these huge bubbles in the market for housing and stocks, uh, what we call asset bubbles. When, when a central bank keeps lending too cheap for too long, it creates inflation. We all know that, right? Like the whole problem is if, if you keep money too cheap and too easy, it creates inflation. But there's two kinds of inflation. There's inflation for the things we buy and consume, like hot dogs, television sets, and cars. That's price inflation. But central banks can create asset inflation, like they did with the housing bubble, because they kept rates so low for so long that everybody starts borrowing to buy houses, and the price rises to a level that's just simply unsustainable, and then it crashes. So we see this tremendous crash in 08, 09. And it's a cataclysmic. It wipes out trillions of dollars in wealth. The Fed responds by being the lender of last resort at a scale it's never done before. It prints a trillion dollars to bail out the banks, to bail out uh, foreign central banks like that in England or uh, Brussels. And then we, we have this hangover, okay? That's 09. And, and the book opens in 2010 when economic growth is still really weak, the unemployment rate is still really high. And what's critical is the economists knew that life was gonna be this way. When you have a financial crash, it takes a long time to dig out of that hole. But there was political pressure to do something about it. You know, Unemployment is still at 10%, growth is still really weak. There was so much political anger in America and, and, you know, in, in 2010, we see this right-wing Tea Party movement take power in D.C. Our, our, our democratic institutions in the United States become more and more paralyzed and dysfunctional. And so the central bank under the chairman, Ben Bernanke, says, you know what, we are going to push into the center here, okay? We are going to become the engine of economic growth in America. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it in, in, in the one way we can. We're going to print new money. Okay. And, and, and that's a really key thing to sit down and kind of think about. When, when you drive economic growth, you can do it through like Keynesian economics of, yeah. of bar, you know, the government hiring people to dig ditches and build buildings and uh, missiles or whatever. Yeah. This is a different thing. This is a central bank saying, we're going to print hundreds of billions and eventually trillions of dollars and give it to the banks so that they do more risky lending and, and drive growth that way. Why is that Ben Bernanke's decision? Like, like in what, like, I, I am stunned here because, like, obviously I'm aware that quantum easing has happened. And I've, you know, we, uh, look, you know, I've been through your book um, and I've seen that this is the case, that it was driven by the Fed, but like, it's just dawned on me right there this second. It's like, why the fuck is that Ben Bernanke's decision? Like, he wasn't fucking elected. He's not Congress. And I'm fairly sure they're the only ones that are allowed to tax um, or at least allocate spending. As, or I can't remember the exact language as far as I'm aware. So Congress, are, as far as I'm aware, the only people who can, yeah, allocate the budget. So why is a central bank suddenly allowed to do that? Like, is it, I don't know why I've not thought of this before. <laughs>
it's such like a profound, interesting, revealing question. So what you're talking about here is in the United States, you have so-called, quote, fiscal authorities, fiscal, tax, spend. This is our, our democratically controlled institutions like Congress and the White House. These are the people that can say, OK, folks, we are going to tax you. We're going to raise money and we're going to use that money to build a dam or a bridge mm -hmm. or a school. And that's how society works. Yeah, normally. That's, that's fiscal policy. But then you've got, quote, monetary policy which is what, what the central bank does, which is manage a currency mm. and then be the lender of last resort to the bank. 